Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you've come to join me for art again. I want to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, we're in week six in the week of September 28th. So it's almost the end of September. And this week, our I can statements are, I can create a self-portrait inspired by the art of Frida Kahlo. And some of you may have never heard of her, but she's a really cool artist. And I can create an original work of art using color, line, shape, and symbols. And some of you may already know what a symbol is, but we're going to talk a little bit about that also. Okay. Today, we're going to review rules and expectations. I know you get tired of hearing them, but if I repeat them, then uh, you will remember them no matter what. Reading of the book Frida by Jonah Winter. Um, we're going to discuss what is Hispanic Heritage Month, and we're going to look at how lines, shape, color and symbols are used in art, especially self-portraits. And then there's going to be a quick demo and an assignment. Okay, so you get to make some art. Okay, I'm going to try to get this up. It's kind of slow today. There we go. Art room rules. Attitude is a choice. So have a positive attitude, respect everyone, and try your best. And I want you to make sure that you don't forget to view the video and complete the assignment. Submit your artwork to me via Class Dojo, Google Classroom, or email me at eturner at ecps.us. Without your artwork, I cannot give you a grade and you want to have a grade. Offline learners, turn in your art to the school when you get new flash drives. So when you come pick up your new flash drive, drop off all your work, including your artwork, okay? Okay, really quickly, we're gonna review what is the shape. Well, the shape is the outline of an object, and it is the one of the elements of art. And remember we said elements of art are the ingredients that make up art. We talked about basic shapes like the circle, a square, and we see a pattern there with the checkerboard, the triangle, which we see a lot of those like with street signs, an oval like the ring, which is like a circle that's been stretched a little bit, rectangle, similar to a square, only two of the sides are not the same size as the two other sides. So in other words, these two sides are equal and these two sides are not, they're longer. And there's an example of a window and we're going to talk about the rectangle again because we're going to be using that. And a rhombus is also known as a diamond, diamond shape. And we see those a lot with street signs too. And we talked about organic shapes, shapes that we find in nature, um, like a leaf or flower, or even this little blob of paint. Okay, and we talked about pattern, repeating shapes, colors, lines, or symbols, and we'll talk more about symbols in a moment. And principles of design works together with the ingredients in elements of art. So pattern is one of those principles of design. Okay, I've got a quick video here to show you about the Hispanic Heritage Month, which is going on now. The only group of people who are truly Native to America are Native Americans. The rest of us can trace our roots to ancestors who immigrated to the United States from other countries. One group of Americans who can do this are Hispanics. Hispanics and Latinos can trace their roots to Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Around 50 million Americans call themselves Hispanic or Latino. Their customs and traditions have become a part of the United States culture. 
Because of this, Congress passed a law stating that September 15th through October 15th is National Hispanic Heritage Month. During this month, Hispanic activities are celebrated all over the United States. Music, food, dancing, and story readings from Latino and Hispanic history and culture are shared. Hispanic authors, poets, artists, and performers share the arts from their ancestors' countries. Hispanic active military men and women and military veterans, as well as those who have or do serve in politics, are honored. Government organizations like the National Archives and Smithsonian Institute join together to recognize the many generations of Hispanic Americans who have added great things to our nation and society. National Hispanic Heritage Month starts on September 15th and not September 1st because five Central American countries celebrate their independence around that day. Those five countries are Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. So if you're of Hispanic or Latino heritage, remember to show pride in who you are, especially between September 15th and October 15th. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of background about what Hispanic Heritage Month is. And it's actually already begun middle of September and it ends the middle of October. Okay, and we saw like a lot of things like the costumes, the way they were dressed, and the, they also have wonderful music, but our focus is gonna be on the art, okay? And we're gonna take a look at the artist Frida Kahlo, and this is a book that I chose. I really like the illustrations in it, but it gives you a little bit of background about Frida. Welcome to Teacher Reads. I'm Miss S. Today, we are going to read Frida, written by Jonah Winter and illustrated by Anna Juan. Frida Enters the World For little Frida, the world is Mexico. Her house is a blue house. It is in the town of Coyoacan. Frida's father is an artist and a photographer. He teaches her how to use a paintbrush. Frida's mother takes care of six daughters. Often, she is tired. Often, Frida is lonely, even though she has sisters. Enter stage left, Frida's imaginary friend. Her name is also Frida. They play games. All of a sudden, Frida falls very ill. She is in bed for months. There's something wrong with one of her legs. Even her imaginary friends can't cheer her. That's when Frida teaches herself how to draw. Drawing saves her from being sad. After Frida gets well, she still wants to make art. So, she paints little paintings. They are copies of other paintings. Painting onto photographs is what Frida's father does for a living. He teaches her how to do this too. Frida also paints things she sees through a microscope. She loves looking at things very closely. At school, Frida studies science. She is bored. School is too easy. One day, Frida is riding the bus home from school. A horrible accident happens. A trolley runs into the bus. Frida almost dies. In the hospital, it is painting that saves her once again. Painting is like her imaginary friend. It is there whenever she wants it. It keeps her company. It keeps her from giving up hope. After the accident, life will never be the same for Frida. She will walk with a cane when she is able to walk. Her body will hurt always. 
But Frida doesn't cry or complain. Instead of crying, she paints pictures of herself crying. When she can't leave her bed, she paints in bed. When her whole torso is put in a cast, she paints on the cast. Nothing can stop Frida from painting because she's so often alone, unable to leave her house, she has to use her imagination. She paints what she sees in her heart, on top of what she sees with her eyes. It's almost like painting on photographs. She paints little magical scenes with words at the bottom. All over Mexico, people paint these kinds of scenes. Sometimes they are scenes of accidents with angels coming to the rescue. They are like prayers for people who are sick. They are called esfotos. Frida paints esfotos of herself when she is sick or in pain. Frida imitates no one in her style. Her paintings are like nothing else. In museums, people still look at them and weep and sigh and smile. She turns her pain into something beautiful. It is like a miracle. Viva Frida. Long live Frida. The end. Yeah, I hope that, you enjoyed reading. That gives us some idea about the life that Frida led. And she was in a lot of pain most of her life. And I chose um, the artist Frida not just because of it being Hispanic Heritage Month, but the fact that she was at home quite a bit in bed and I know how it might feel for you guys being stuck at home and not being able to go to school but look at all the beautiful art that she created from home okay now she used symbols in her art um, and a symbol in art can be a picture it can be uh, the use of letters um, a symbol like this is very simple, a heart, a heart shape. What do we think of when we see a heart? Well, we think of love or we think of Valentine's Day. But if I take that heart and I draw like a crack in it or I separate it ever so much, it reminds us of somebody who's heartbroken or sad. Okay, so those are symbols in art. But I could also take a heart, and a heart would represent love, and I love puppies. So if I saw a picture of puppies, I would think love, you know, because I love them so much, and those two little puppies look so adorable. Okay, here's some images of Frida's work, and Frida actually working. And you can see it was true that when she was bedridden, she did not waste any time. She actually created art while she was in bed. And sometimes her um, paintings had like beautiful flowers and the outfits from her heritage from Mexico. But sometimes she actually did a portrait, a painting of herself as something totally different. And in this one, you can see that she is a deer. You can see her face as the deer. And you can see the arrows, a bunch of arrows stuck in her. And that must be very painful. Well, she was in a lot of pain. And you can see the trees. You don't see any grass, green grass. You don't have any green leaves. Everything is mostly brown. Well, when you use um, a lack of color, it can make it look sad. And remember last week, we did the monsters with the emotions. Well, sometimes you can use symbols in your art to represent an emotion, and hers was pain. Here are some of my favorite portraits of her. And these are her self-portraits. A self-portrait is gonna be a painting of you not somebody else. Like if I painted a picture of her, it would be a portrait of her. But if I look in the mirror and I'm looking at myself and drawing or painting, that's a self-portrait. These were her self-portraits, but each one of them were a little bit different. 
but you notice that in each one there's a border, something that is around her, whether it is a frame like this one in the middle. She's got a frame of symbols of different flowers and birds, and they're very colorful and festive looking. Or this one, which is not a frame, but the birds are framed around her. And here she's got a frame that's the monkeys because she actually had animals at home that kept her happy. You know, like sometimes your dog or your cat will make you happy. She had little monkeys and birds that she collected. And this shows she's not always smiling in her paintings, but she had some things that made her happy also around her. All right, now, for your project, you will draw a self-portrait. That means a drawing of yourself. And you're going to use a frame around the portrait that uses symbols or your favorite things, okay? Your art does not need to look like mine, okay? I'm just going to give you a demonstration, okay? You may use crayon, marker, paint, or whatever you have at home. Okay, let me get this started. Okay, this is an example, and I have not finished coloring it. Get this a little bit larger. Okay, I'm going to show you on my dry erase board, but imagine that you are using, let me get that out of the way. Imagine that you are using a sheet of paper, okay? You're going to first start by drawing a rectangle, okay? Rectangle. It's going to be your frame or your border. So leave some space because you're going to be adding to it, okay? Okay, there's the head. It's an oval shape. Ovals for the eyes. You got two of those. And circles for the eyes themselves, the pupils. I gave myself some eyebrows. And you're not necessarily going to have bangs, but I want to show you how I added hair to this. First, I added the bangs, if there are any. A nose. I'm going to make myself happy in this. A neck. Okay, and shoulders because we are not doing the entire body. Our um, self-portrait is just gonna be like from chest up. Okay, here's the rest of the hair I wanted to show you. Okay, it goes above the head and I'm going to erase part of these lines in there. I'm adding a little bit of hair in front of the face. And that top line, I'm gonna take that out. Okay, now it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, I could do a pattern on the shirt. Okay, now around the border, you can draw some of those symbols. Could be part of your name and part of your favorite things. I've got hearts, you don't have to do hearts. Do flowers. It could be characters if you wanted it to be. You know, it could be dogs, cats. It can be like I've got balloons, so it looks more like a party going on. Okay, I want to jump ahead a little bit and show you. Okay. Here we go, I've got some of my drawing, okay? In this drawing, I could add some things and cut them out, and this is called a collage, and I'm gonna quickly cut out some of these shapes. I can make some of them larger. And remember, you gotta add some color to these or add some um, 
add something a little bit different to it. If it's in black and white, I need to see some shading in there. Whoop, here goes my demo. Ah, there we go. All right, after you cut it out, you can tape it or glue it down. I could also add the cat. I drew a little cat's head. You don't have to do a cat though. And all of this is going to be added to my border. Okay, and remember, I have not colored all of this in. Okay, how cute is that? Okay, this just gives you an example. All right, now, so this week you're going to create a self portrait with a border. Make sure that you include some of your favorite things in that border and add some color. Online learners, you must take a picture and post to Seesaw. Oh, not Seesaw. You don't need it for Seesaw. Google Classroom or Class Dojo or email it to me. So you're going to be doing Google Classroom. I'm sorry, guys. Um, offline learners must turn in their finished artwork when they return to school to pick up another flash drive. So if you have any questions, you feel free to contact me. There's my um, phone number too. So again, just ignore Seesaw. That's Google Classroom, okay? So if you're submitting through Google Classroom, you can do that, Class Dojo, or email me. But I must see your art to give you a grade, okay? Okay, let's see. Let me share my screen. There we go. Okay, so I want you to go make some art. I can't wait to see your self portraits with your symbols. Have a great week and I love you. I miss you and can't wait to see your art. Bye bye.